Hey guys, James here from 5-Axis Maker. Today I want to show you how to constrain a toolpath using sketch boundaries. In my previous videos, we covered the basics for creating a 5-Axis toolpath and controlling tool orientation. So if you've missed those, check out parts 1 to 3. I set up my front, back and side roughing, and I'll quickly simulate this. I can see that the side roughing is overlapping the material from the previous operation, although rest and machining is enabled. There's also a lot of unnecessary movement that will lead to a collision. I need to control this toolpath so my machine only removes this leftover material from the side. I'll do this using a sketch boundary and outline the area of my leftover stock. So I'll start by drawing on my stock geometry's face. Next we'll open manufacture and open the side roughing toolpath. In the geometry tab, I want to use machining boundary and in a drop down, I'll use selection and then I'll select my sketch. The yellow outline will represent the projection of my tool boundary. It means that my tool will not machine outside this area. If I were to change my tool orientation, notice that my boundary is now deformed. The tool orientation projects itself through this boundary and will deform if they are not at the same angles. One way to have more accurate control over the toolpath boundary is to sketch onto the offset plane within the same tool coordinate system. I'll open the design and activate the component that's being used for my tool coordinate system. Next, I'll select the plane I'd like my toolpath to use, and I'll create an offset plane and move it arbitrary to my model. I'll start sketching onto this plane, but notice how my view suddenly shifts. This perspective is representing looking directly through the tool, meaning drawing in this plane now is an accurate boundary to my model. Once we've programmed this in Manufacture, we have a much more constrained, accurate toolpath. This method can be applied for many different types of tooling operations. It can be very useful for finishing when applying the best toolpaths for specific areas. My next video will explain how to use geometry for toolpath boundaries. Once again, thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have any questions and take care.